Greetings, VAC fans. Now it's time to take Thomas Rechtenwald's 2025 Hyla EST and put it to the test. All kinds of airflow and suction tests, that is. So I've done my best to take this PVC pipe around the very odd uh, inlet hole in there. As a reminder, this is what the hose connector looks like. Yeah, it's square. So I've even taped underneath the handle, and I don't think the suction measurements are going to be, well, you know what? They will be accurate under these conditions, which are less than ideal. The airflow measurements should be perfectly fine, though. So let's try low speed first. Yep, and basically about a zero. Well, or maybe a one. All right, let's push the magic button here. There you go. Got a little bit. Now it's kind of stuck. Okay, to reiterate on low, which is the only thing you can do unless you push the magic button, you see really zero or maybe one inch of suction. On high, I'll say seven. Airflow, low speed. A little less than 40 CFM, okay. And on high, a little less than 65 CFM. But remember, this machine only uses 750 watts. That is from just the canister, not the power nozzle. And now, let's see what the real suction can do sealed. But remember, this is for dry pickup only. Achtung, nerfür trocken saugen however you say that. All right, what do we got? What do we got? 56. Yep, about 56. And now CFM through the hose. You figure it's probably gonna be in the mid 60s. Yep, that's where it is. I just love that little wind down gurgle, don't you? And now the EST is fully set up with the EBK 340. For the first time, both meters that we're interested in are, well, available in the same frame. But we can only do one measurement, and that's brush roll spinning. All right, 
We're definitely under 60 CFM to be sure. And well under 900 watts. So I'm gonna guess that this power nozzle, obviously not under load, is gonna be a little more than 100 watts. It's rated at one and a half amps, but here it's only doing about 100 watts. Power nozzle RPM. What will it do? Almost 5,600, not too bad. I think what I'm gonna do is show you the difference between what the air is in my basement versus when the Hyla is actually running. So the output of this is completely unfiltered. It just comes right out. Now this particle tester only measures particles. It doesn't know what kind they are. So if you see the particles rise, in this case, because we're not picking up any dirt, it's going to be water vapor coming out. But still, an increase in particles is an increase in particles. And of course, if you do have a lot of water vapor coming out, you know what will happen? The humidity will rise. Now, in some cases, that could be a good thing. That might be a bad thing. It just all kind of depends. Okay, here's the baseline measurements. Now, if you've never seen this before, right, you have this little white bar right here. So overall, it slid all the way over to the left, means this is very clean air. This is 0.3, 2.5, and 10 micrometers. And it's very, very clean. So off we go. So we obviously saw some variances in here and uh, well, it cleared up after a while. So, I mean, that's good. But unfortunately, you see the two and a half being, eh, that's kind of high. Um, the 0 0.3 peaked up high, but came down back low again. So, you know, whatever. And remember, I'm not actually cleaning anything. There's no dirt being filtered out of the water at this point in time. This is just bare exhaust, but overall, the white vertical bar there stayed well into the green, so the exhaust is perfectly acceptable, although the particle counts are very different than what you would expect if you were using a HEPA bag. Now, since we know how this Hyla EST measures, I've got some commentary on it. So it's an incredibly expensive machine, obviously. Um, I think it's a, it's a neat and unusual machine. Obviously, it uses water. And one advantage, I suppose, would be there's absolutely no filters to worry about at all. Nothing, ever. It's a totally filterless machine. But because it's made in Slovenia, you know, in Europe, the problem is 
it has to obey, the manufacturers have to obey the low power regulations that are in Europe. And that just limits what any machine can actually do, especially when, well, trying to vacuum, say, a thick American carpet. I will say something about the EST. Given its low power, I mean, compared to like something that uses 14 or 1500 watts, maybe even um, previous, you know, rainbows that I've measured before use a lot more power, this machine is fairly efficient. So, CFM in the mid 50s, suction maybe around, well, it's like it's nine, you know, so close to double digits coming from the EBK nozzle is. I guess mediocre, but if it's only 750 watts plus an extra 105-ish or so, that's pretty low power. And I know people are concerned about that these days, so they don't want necessarily a central vacuum uh, type of canister using 15 or 1600 watts popping circuits all over the place. So I suppose this is, you know, what you have. I've been dying to measure one of these things for many years, ever since I saw them first on YouTube. And I'm glad that uh, Sir Thomas Rechtenwald has given me the opportunity to do this. So until next time, happy vacuuming.